it better be deleted because let me tell you something. If he's blocked me, if he's blocked me, <laughs> how dare he block me? How dare he? My pride. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel, good sir. You are not a gentleman. I said, good sir. Uh oh. <laughs> In short, what I meant to say is that none of this really indicates slander or anything like that, which is what Adam's implying. He's implying this article slandered him. So I'm, I'm really curious to hear what he has to say about it. <laughs> anyway. So this is an abridged or, or condensed response to Vanity Fair um, of the article that we just read. All right, I want to talk about what happened last night. So if you have seen my video yesterday, then just be patient a second and I'm going to give you an update. If you haven't seen the video and you don't want to watch it, basically very condensed, Vanity Fair posted an article that is incredibly awful um it is <laughs> it's incredibly awful kind of like how you post incredibly awful videos about people adam i know it's there's a word coming to me karma just a little bit just a, just a bit <laughs> is lying about me it gets facts about me wrong. it's lying about me on for no reason it all seemed pretty accurate based on what I've observed of Adam online. Pretty fantastic. Reason It paints me as a stalker. It paints me as a crazy person who um, solely for the past three years, day in, day out, has been posting videos on Colleen. You have! <laughs> <laughs> paints me as a stalker and someone who's been repeatedly posting videos? What about that statement is not true? Um, all these like defamatory things, right? And they didn't reach defamatory. <laughs> Adam, you've made a career out of defaming people. <laughs> the lack of self awareness. Amazing. They reached out to me for uh, an interview. They didn't reach out to me for a comment, even at a bare minimum. Why would they? Why would they? However, there is someone in the article that is featured very, you know, with their statements, and it's Colleen's lawyer. Remember the team of Andrew Brettler? You know the is this the same article? I'm confused. Like, I want to check. Just because... I'm confused. <laughs> Try racial injustice. Try it. Try it, guys. An interesting way to um Adam This is the only article that mentions Ma Adam McIntyre. Did they take it down? Like I'm confused. Cuz there were no quotes from Colleen in the article. I mean, there were Hi everyone. Hi. Um, so this is the hour long one. So I just want to check if this is the indeed the same article. Viewed and given a. That's the Huffington Post article. My God, Adam. Okay, so yeah, it is. It's the same article. They didn't reach out to Colleen for a comment. This is stuff that she said publicly and they've just quoted her. Like, what? <laughs> like, it's so strange. <laughs> the way he's twisting things is like, He's making it sound like they reached out to her directly for comment, you know? Unless I missed that. Was that in the article? I don't know. From memory, I feel like 
they only quoted her on things that she publicly said. The one that works with like Prince Andrew and stuff, they got an opportunity to speak, but I didn't. But the entire article is painting me in a light that basically anything I say will be discredited on Vanity Fair. By mm. All right. Doesn't feel nice, does it, Adam? By the way, so the purpose of the article is to paint me in a way that will basically make anything I say or have said not credible in, in any way, shape, or form. Well, I mean, no one has to say that, Adam, to make you seem not credible. Like, your videos on their own imply that you are not credible. You lie frequently. There's, uh, you know, people always say, leave Adam alone, leave him alone. Oh, my God. But there, there are a, a number of uploads on my Nectar channel where I've covered his videos and debunked a lot of what he's saying. So if, if you'd like to go and watch them, they're all there. But <laughs> I'm just saying, you don't need you don't need a third party to come in like Vanity Fair and say, hmm, there's, there's things that you are saying that are not accurate. Oh my God, you're defaming me? Oh my God? What? <laughs> she didn't talk to Rolling Stone, so why would she talk to Vanity Fair? He's making it seem like she talked to Vanity Fair. I don't think there are any direct quotes from her. I think this is just an article that Vanity Fair wrote about the situation. Form. And so the article does these little things where they make these little jabs, 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 jabs at me um, to try. <laughs> you make little jabs at people all the time, Adam. Do you think you're immune to that? Did you think that when you came into the kitchen, you wouldn't get burnt as well? Once or twice? Fuck, I'm having a brain blank. It's like that time he went after... Help me, guys. Help me. He wears makeup. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm going to get roasted for this because I've forgotten. Rich Lux, fuck's sake. Um, Rich Lux. It's like the time you went after Rich Lux. <laughs> and it just, like, blew up in his face. You know? He can't help himself. I break down my credibility. And even one of the last things the article says was, well, three years ago, what was Adam expecting? Sympathy? Things like that, right? And I didn't get reached out to you for a comment. I mean, the article is incredibly... They didn't reach out to Colleen for a comment. So why would they reach out to you for a comment? I mean, you are known, but in, in the terms of, in the fame barometer, like, you are relatively unknown. Why would they reach out to you over the primary sort of uh, subject of the piece? You're implying that they reached out to her, but I can't see any, like, direct quotes or the fact that they did reach out to her. Unless I'm mistaken, I am dyslexic. Did, did you guys see anything in the article that related to a direct quote or an updated quote from Colleen? Like, he's straight up lying right now. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh my god, my camera. Got my bounce on the... Oh god. <sighs> ...defamatory towards my character and paints the situation in a completely inappropriate and wrong way. <laughs> oh my god, what a drama queen. Like, I don't say that lightly. Um, what a drama queen. This is crazy. I have a lot... I want to talk about about the response to the article, but I want to say something very clear at the start of this video, and this makes me very nervous to say. However, there is very little right now that I can say in regards to the article because I gave Vanity Fair 24 hours to reach out to me to make a comment and correct this, and they chose not to do that. So this is now this is now going a lot further than what I thought it was going to. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> He's suing Vanity Fair. Good luck, mate. <laughs> Good luck. Oh my god. <laughs> this is fucking fantastic. I'm dying. <laughs> Let's just let that marinate for a second. <laughs> Adam, Ma Adam McIntyre. McIntyre, sorry. 
um, he might sue me for pronouncing his name wrong. It's always been McIntyre for me because I'm from Australia. McIntyre. It's not McIntyre. What are you talking about? Just let it marinate the irony that Adam McIntyre is suing someone else for defamation. Let's just forget the fact that he probably should have been sued by other people a dozen times by this point for defamation, but it's fine. It's fine. Then don't worry. Let's just forget the fact that he's been scooting under YouTube like guidelines and, and things like that and somehow getting away with all this shit. But, you know, it's what YouTube does best. Sorry, YouTube. Love you. No. It's okay. Um, and my day today was a lot of phone calls and a lot of meetings, and I can't really speak about. Oh my God, he had meetings, guys. It's really important. Oh, <laughs> uh, he had meetings and phone calls all day about this very innocuous article. Like, as they say, "Fuck me." By <laughs> anything further than. Hook me gently with a chainsaw. Hook me sideways with a chainsaw, or whatever, whatever the term. Heathers. Good movie. Watch it. That. They were given the opportunity. My mother has been reaching out to the journalist. Uh... Mm. <laughs> I went and told mummy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Fuck. Every time I'm like, think like, I'm not going to be able to like do anything with the video. Like I, I have like this anxiety guys where I start reviewing a video or watching it I go into it blind and I'm worried that the video is just going to be nothing and I'm not going to be able to make it entertaining. But like every time it's just gold. <laughs> I'm telling mum. Um, I have been putting posts out, you know, directly tagging the journalist. I have given Vanity Fair 24 hours to respond or correct it or make a statement. And they are refusing to do that. This is because they don't give a fuck. And you've got no case for defamation. Like, I read nothing defamatory in that article. They played you on, at your own game. Like, and make, no, make no mistake. I, I dislike Vanity Fair. I dislike the media in general. They're all, you're all a part of the same melting pot, Adam. And... I take great pleasure in watching you cannibalize each other because it's what you deserve. So um, it is going further and because it is going further, I cannot say anything really um, new about the article. I am strictly today going to be talking about the backlash to the article. Good luck. Article and what has happened after the article. I am not necessarily going to be speaking. If you want to waste a huge amount of money trying to sue them over that, like, fluff article like absolute like barely anything like get real about the article um that feels very weird to say on youtube but um things behind the scenes are like um escalating a lot further than i ever expected right do you know that threatening a lawsuit is uh actually an escalation as well he hasn't directly said that Smartly so. One of the few smart things that he's done. He's alluding to the fact that he's going to sue them. Um, he's not outwardly said it, but that that is something that is quite contentious in itself, saying you're going to sue someone publicly, you know. Um, so, the one thing I do want to say about the article is that they made a correction to the article. So, they oh. know that the article has so many inaccuracies. Wait with me. Stick with me a second. They know... Th Oh, I've got all the time in the world, Adam. That the article has so many inaccuracies and so many just minute details wrong about me. So are you going to highlight what was changed? So Andrew uh, Quintana, the journalist, and I will say his name because he's publicly on the record promoting the story and tagging me, by the way, and along the lines of the truth is finally out there. But yet he didn't reach out to me for comment, but was in Colleen's lawyer's ears or they were in his. How do you know that? <laughs> if you scroll down on this article, it says this story has been updated. So would you think... Hmm. Maybe they corrected their defamatory statements towards me. And a lot of people on specifically the Colleen Ballinger snark were saying, I wish Adam would start speaking more, you know, by saying like in my opinions and allegedly and stuff like that. Um, don't need to say that whenever we're talking about um, things like this. I just want to. <laughs> yes, you do, Adam. <laughs> are, you, are you a pleb? Like what's going on? <laughs> I can just say whatever I want without consequences. 
well, can you afford Vanity Fair the same, you know, entitlements that you feel should be beseeched upon you? <laughs> I can say whatever I want. Vanity Fair can say the same thing. I can write whatever I want. I don't need to say allegedly. Whatever. Leave me alone. <laughs> Leave me alone. Let me get that out of the way first and foremost. Um... So it says the story's been updated. So on the phone today, I was alerted that the story had been updated, not by anyone to do with Vanity Fair, but something I talked about previous. And we were searching through it, and there was one change made to the article, which means that Vanity Fair knew that there is inaccuracies in the story and chose to change something. Do you want to know what they changed? Yes, I do. So this article says, a former fan, Adam McIntyre, a then 17-year-old, Ballinger was his idol, and her merch could be seen all over the Irish teenager's bedroom. This was the sentence in this entire article that was changed. Right. So what, what was it originally? The original change, the original thing said, McIntyre, who grew up in Brighton, England, which all it takes is a Google search to know that I am Irish. They got the country wrong. They didn't even get the city wrong. They got the country that I was born in wrong. <laughs> so. Uh, I was expecting this huge bombshell. That's it. Okay. The journalist is, you know, bragging on social media that he's put so much work into this. They got the country that I was born. I mean, you've bragged about how the effort that you put into your videos. So that <laughs> he got the country wrong. That's defamatory, apparently. And grew up in wrong. I'm not from England. I do not. I was not born in England. They got a factual thing wrong. They're American. Okay. Go, go easy on them. <laughs> they geographically challenge. Sorry, Whisper. You're not geographically challenged. But you got to admit, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a, um, there is a track record of that being a thing in America. America. <laughs> Love you, Whisper. They also got the city wrong. Like, not even that they got the country wrong. They got the city wrong. I'm not from Brighton, not from England. I'm from Derry in the north of Ireland. Oh, no. <laughs> um... Irish citizenship, all of this is readily available online, down to even if you like search in Adam McIntyre, like where he's from, it'll say, you know, Derry in Ireland. Um, so they did zero research on my behalf of the article, and that is a big problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is a big problem. Yeah. Let's just, like, dismiss everything said in this article because they got one tiny little detail wrong. <laughs> this was the sentence that they changed, which has first... I was going to get pissy, but you're right. <laughs> Respect. Further solidified my point that they know that there's inaccuracies in the story so much so that they tried to sneakily change a little thing. Um, however, it's not going to stop at that because there is this entire thing needs my comment. You can't say this about me and say things about Colleen and allow her legal team to respond and not even give me a tip off that this is coming. <laughs> Why would they give you a tip off? You didn't give Colleen a tip off when you posted the Colleen Bollinger please stop video. <laughs> the entitlement. Guys, can we just take a moment <laughs> to, like, bask in the entitlement? You need to let me, let me know that you're going to be posting an article about things I've done, you know? Like, who do you think you are? <laughs> what planet are you living on? What is this? I'm so confused. On Vanity Fair. So, again, in closing this part, before we go on to... What, what happened next and what happened overnight. Um, I can't say anything further um, and I really won't be saying anything. Guys, I'm really important and something really important is happening and I really can't talk about it because it's super important. <sighs> I know about you, but I'm exhausted. Further, other than just tweets here and there on this until I have an update for you um, and we will leave it there. Now, what I want to talk about is what happened from last night to now because things got a lot. Things got a lot online. So the journalist behind this, Andrew uh, Quintana, is publicly attached to the article, as you can see here, and did so much as the following. On his Twitter, or sorry, on his Instagram, uh, he had a public Instagram, which was attached to his journalist, you know, like thing, like it was, his username was literally Andrew Quintana writes, like it was about his journalism, and it was a public page, stick with me here. He- <laughs> What in the comments says, F you, Groomlean. This is the maturity we're dealing with. On his story, starts reposting stories about how great the article is and how much research went into the article and that he's been working on it for so long and finally everything's out there and was tagging me. So this is how I find out about the article. And also, he... So, 
what you're saying is he reached out to you about the article and previously you said, oh, so he's reached out to you technically for comment. Am I getting that right? <laughs> like, like, I mean, he's tagging you in it. So that would mean that <clears throat> he's acknowledging you. And that's sort of one of your main problems is I didn't reach out to you. He posts on a grid photo, um, the article, and says misinformation online is ramp or, like rampant. He says that misinformation online. Only believe in trusted, reliable sources. I've been reporting on this topic for the last week. Hashtag Colleen Ballinger at the Adam McIntyre. So he tagged me and didn't even tag Colleen. Yet Colleen was given the opportunity to respond. Her lawyers did. I wasn't, but I'm the one tagged. This is how I find That's because you're a shitty T channel. Like, why would, why would they respond? Like, why? <laughs> Wait, so he didn't respond to the journalist? I don't know. He's very upset. Find out about it on his public Instagram. So then I repost this and I, I'm like, okay, so this is the only way we can contact you because he doesn't have Twitter. And then he turned off all his comments. So there was a post from ages ago that had the comments on. So I reshared it and was like, so can we comment on this one if you're not running and hiding after bombarding me with these posts and putting it on your story as well? And turned them ones off and then went private. On Twitter, let me show you. I want to address something first and foremost. On Twitter, Jessica Pizzle said the following, quoting me, um, saying that I was so upset whenever I got all the harassment from Colleen. And they go, remember that, Adam? So why are you doing the exact same thing? Um, he is a man who wrote a bad article. He isn't Colleen. Your fans are acting like this. His whole life should be destroyed over it. This is gross. I hope you tell your fans to back off. They're doing too much and going too far. So, and it's of me tweeting that his Instagram went private because of the backlash for him going private on, or public on Vanity Fair slandering me. <laughs> he didn't slander you. <laughs> I saw nothing there that was slanderous or even untrue in that article. Like, it's crazy. He hasn't highlighted what's untrue. I mean, we could watch the hour-long video, but I don't really want to. I don't know. Instead, we're getting a 40-minute video about how his Fifi's got hurt. So, I might watch the hour-long video. I might go back and watch it. I don't know. I don't think I can do it today because I, I don't have the strength. No. So... This person goes on to say, he directed his fans to go to his Instagram. By the way, public Instagram was tagged along with his public page. Nothing wrong with that. This is ridiculous to me. And if you I mean, I think it's safe to say you've got a pretty toxic uh, fandom, Adam, if we can even call it that. You know? If you're going to direct them to do that and take it too far, I feel a disavow is the least one can do. You can't control your fans, but he did control them to go harass this guy. Now... Let me say something first and foremost. If you have the audacity to write a slander piece on me that literally, like, it, it is trying to ruin my entire reputation, right? <laughs> the audacity. Let's just change that. If you have the audacity to post a video um, full of lies about someone. And you are public on social media. Your social medias are linked to your journalist page and stuff like that. You're publishing the article on Vanity Fair. It's fair game. It is fair game. Okay, so we've been validated, guys. I'm allowed to. I'm allowed to cover Adam videos straight from the the mouth of babes. Um, uh, his fans constantly tell me, "Leave Adam alone. Leave him alone." Apparently, he's fair game by his own admission. So my conscience is clear. <laughs> it's fair game. I don't care. It's fair game. It is fair. Okay, Colin Bollinger, bad, but damn, he definitely p living the victim card. Yeah, like, uh, Colin Bollinger in this situation is uh, most definitely wrong. You know? And I think that's important to say, because I don't want to be misconstrued. Fair game. So I quoted this tweet and said the following. The journalist had public Instagram attached to his articles in which he was tagging me. He had the audacity to tag me on the Instagram on his story, on the posts, and his stories. So I'm not allowed to respond to him smearing me on Vanity Fair. I disavow sending hate, but imagine what he's now sending me with Vanity Fair painting me in this light. I asked people to go over there and ask why he didn't interview me and why he's lying on me. And you know what? As I should. You asked people to go over there. <laughs> Interesting. You asked people to go over there. 
You just fucking admitted to it. It's 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 beautiful. It's beautiful. As I should. As I should. Didn't do didn't do anything wrong. Sorry. Didn't do anything wrong. I find it deeply depressing that we have a similar haircut at this current point. I, I'm actually horrified by that. Hurry up and grow hair. Wrong. So then we go on. And I just want to kind of go through what happened on Twitter last night, right? So last night on Twitter, I'm gonna kinda of go through the timeline. So it it gets this is what this is what's happening now. So Vanity Fair are doubling down on this article. However, they're running. As they should. From this article. So that's all things that are going to be discussed. Not, not here publicly. So they did this tweet, and it was about the article. And it said the following. Uh, or sorry, I can't even see it because they deleted it. So what ended up happening was Vanity Fair tweeted out the article along with a, a quote from the article that was like painting me in a bad light or something or painting Colleen in a decent light or something. So I quote it. Uh, on stream, as you all saw if you watched the stream yesterday, and a lot of people go and interact with it. They get ratioed, they get like 300 quote replies, they get like 600 replies, crazy numbers, right? People telling them to fact check, people telling them they're lying, people telling them why didn't they reach out to the person they're um, speaking about, all these different things. Vanity Fair end up deleting the tweet. They end up deleting, flat out deleting the tweet. Flat out deleting the tweet, all years after getting all this backlash, so that all of these quote tweets would not get any interaction. Adam, you've deleted tweets before, after getting backlash. You constantly delete tweets. You shouldn't even be on Twitter because you got banned. You got banned and you created a new account. <laughs> so, yeah. The, the hypocrisy here is amazing. Because the quote tweet has been deleted. And you know what they have the audacity to do? Tweet the same tweet an extra couple times so that all the previous backlash has now been deleted. They've now done these new tweets and there's multiple of them. <laughs> Apparently... Apparently getting uh, harassed online and having to repost a tweet, apparently that is something that you should have audacity to do. Adam has never deleted a tweet and then reposted it after backlash. <laughs> yeah, he was banned, Rio. I'm pretty sure, like... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember him being banned off Twitter. And then he created a new account. So the hate is more, like, spread out around the internet, so it doesn't look like so much backlash on one interview. Yeah, it's damage control, of course. If they're getting harassed, like, you would do the exact same thing. So it's weird that you're calling them out for something that you would do, Adam. And tweet. And let me tell you something. That is not a good look. That is not, not, not a good look. It's not a good look, but it's something you've done and it's something you will do in the future. <laughs> so we're gonna He was for bullying. Yeah. I'm gonna read through these tweets and talk about what happened last night. So I write, this article is laughable. The jour journalist is working cl closely with Colleen. You can, I mean, he's, the lawyer is quoted in the article. So they are working with Colleen's lawyer in some fashion. And the journalist is on the record lying about information about me that has proven that I told the truth about. They quote things against me that I have shown video and text proof of journalism moment. So again, this tweet was deleted, but they end up tweeting it again, hoping that we're not going to quote that one. So then they're not going to get- Isn't it, doesn't it suck, Adam, to be misrepresented and lied about? Doesn't it suck? You'd think someone would have self-awareness and, and take a step back and think, Hmm. <laughs> you know, have a little reflective moment and just be like, not been conducting myself in a, an appropriate fashion. But no, no, that's not going to happen. Not with Adam. Get backlash. And then I go, Dear Vanity Fair, your journalist, Andrew uh, Quintana, published an incredibly defamatory article by me and includes many statements against me that have been proven incorrect. And it's a very malicious attack of character, and I would like to know why an article so factually wrong would be approved. So this was 22 hours ago. We gave them the entire day to respond, and that's why it's going further, just to kind of let you all know. And I go, he doesn't have Twitter, but the Instagram that he's posting the stories on, um, this is it. Um, and I want to ask him why he worked on such a hippies against me and didn't even, you know, ask me for a comment. So there's his Instagram, which, you know, is not. He's chronically online. There's too many other people to scrutinize for him to have some self-awareness. Yeah, it's very much, the scrutiny is definitely external. It's never internalized without him. He never looks within, you know, to think, maybe this is not a good idea. Maybe I need to chill the fuck out. Never happens. One day, one day. No. Hello? Did he delete it? 
Yeah, he deleted it. Is it deleted now or something? Is it deleted or am I blocked? It better be deleted because let me tell you something. If he's blocked me, if he's blocked me. <laughs> How dare he block me? How dare he? My pride. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel, good sir. You are not a gentleman. And it's said, good sir. Uh-oh. <laughs> This is, this is like fucking gold. I love it. He better not have blocked me. Oh my god. Leave me alone. Let me fact check this first. Hold on. Andre Quintana. Andre Quintana writes. If he's. <laughs> he blocks everyone. Yeah. He blocks heaps of people online. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure he's blocked me before locked me let me tell you something let me tell you something instagram wait where's this instagram which one says instagram are we sure he's not just instagram can someone say oh my god better fact checked it you know better fact check it adam oh my god my camera is giving me it's okay you can see my dirty like clean washing hanging up to dry it's okay you get a little in you know like a little you know, window into my life, guys. Send me the... Wait, let me look <clears> on my phone. Because I think he, it might just be that my computer is not picking it up. Okay, wait. I think it might just be that. He's blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Adam. No, we got blocked. <laughs> oh, my God. This is fucking fantastic. He blocked me? How? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> He's blocked me. Why wouldn't he block you? <laughs> he wrote an innocuous article about it, and you're like, you're saying it's defamatory, which it's not, which is defamatory in itself. So it's like, you're, you're defaming him by saying he's defamatory. You know? It writes itself. It's, it's brilliant. Can you all check? Can you check that it's not just deleted? Please, can, can people go and check? Is his Instagram still there on private? Yeah, can you go and harass him, guys? <laughs> he just did it again! <laughs> Wah! <laughs> Please, I need you to actually check. Please. Oh my god. Check it. Check it now. So dra so much drama. I think this was a T-channel, right? T-channels are my new soap operas. It's freaking brilliant. It's just like... <laughs> it's just a bunch of people getting their titties in a twist about just stupid shit, you know? The level of diva energy and, and self-importance here is just... it's. Amazing. Like. Can someone send me a screenshot or something on Discord? <laughs> He's like so like panicked, but also you could virtually see him salivating over this. Please. Oh, you. His, he blocked me. Okay, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I can't even say- I can't even- I'm gonna sue him for blocking me. <laughs> can he not just incognito it? Jeez, yeah. Like, everyone- <laughs> Oh, my lord. LA sixty go. Let me screenshot this. Yeah, let me screenshot this and then post it on Twitter. So my mob can see it. What a little coward. <laughs> what a little coward. <laughs> this 
That's so perfect. It's so perfect. <laughs> what a little coward coming from someone who's blocked other people. Adam has blocked numerous people. I'm pretty sure he's blocked me at one point. Like, it's so funny. It's only bad if someone else does it. It's not bad if Adam does it. What a little coward. Hold on, sorry, let me, sorry, I just find the site on stream. Andrew Quintana, the writer of the, writer of the hit piece against me from at Vanity Fair has just blocked me on Instagram. Post the screenshot. <laughs> so, 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 this is such bullshit, you know? Like, how could you take any of this seriously? Exactly. I can't take this seriously at all. Yeah. It's just so funny. Mom, I know you're watching. Can I hint? <laughs> Mom? <laughs> In the tweet or no? I think his mom's part of the problem. I'm waiting for her text. She said no. Oh, fine. Andrew Quintana, the writer. <sighs> I guess we'll have to wait for the, the lawsuit that I'm not going to win. <laughs> of the hit piece against me from Vanity Fair has just blocked me on Instagram. I'll leave it there. Okay. I said I'll leave it there, but just wait. Come on, you have to let me something here. Okay. Well. Ooh. Ooh. We we gave him the opportunity to reach out to me for comment and he blocked me. <laughs> yeah, because he doesn't give a fuck. It's a message, Adam. He's sending you a message. He's saying, I don't have to give you anything. <laughs> I love it. It's great. My face is dark. Alright. After writing a hit piece? Ooh. You, you make hit pieces for a living, Adam. You know? <laughs> Mom, I'll call you after stream. And we need to also call after the stream as well. Because they'll still be awake. Because it's 24. We'll call them after the stream. Um, ooh. Alright, I'm going to leave it there. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Your arms down. You can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, the entitlement is crazy to me. It's crazy. Oh my god. Even the camera, like, when he put his arms up like this, the camera was like, I'm out. <laughs> you cannot do that. You can't do that. Yes, he just fucking did, Adam. He just did. He just did it. He just blocked you. It's so funny seeing a narcissist, a potential alleged narcissist, um, or, you know, just someone who's incredibly entitled, get told no. Someone tells them no. And they're like, you can't say no. Is there a law I'm unaware of or something? Yeah, apparently it's illegal to block someone. Okay, I'm going to continue moving on because I could be on this for a while, but. Hold on. I, I need to write this in the group chat of journalists that I'm in. Not true. Everything he says are, are facts in his eyes, therefore true, therefore not a hit piece. That's what I mean. Like, <clears throat> I feel like there's something there. I, I feel like it's really dangerous to clinically, like, ruminate about someone's status and that sort of thing but getting swept up in yourself and not you know implying that you can never be wrong very dangerous andrew quintana didn't respond to any of the like reach outs that we did and instead has blocked me on instagram 
Okay, we're gonna. Why? He's not required to respond. He works for a publication called Vanity Fair. He's a journalist for Vanity Fair. Like, if anything, you should be reaching out to Vanity Fair. Who published the article? Like, if you have any awareness of. Like, am I wrong there? You have any awareness of, like, um, this type of thing. You, they are liable for the article, essentially, because they published it. That's if you had any, like, ground, grounds to sue them to begin with. Good God. I, for, for Adam's sake, I hope they're doing it, um, what do they call it? Pro bono? I hope he's not paying a lawyer to do this. I hope they're, like, what's it called when a lawyer, like, they only get paid if they win the pro bono? Is that what it is? <clears throat> no, I'm on the I'm on the right track. You're on the money. Yeah. So I think it's I, I hopefully I think it's pro bono. If I'm wrong, like sorry. But i I hope he's not semi pro bono, yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully he's not paying a lawyer to do this because, like, there's no chance. There's nothing in that article that, um, I mean, he, that article is essentially what Adam does for a living. He twists things. And if they've twisted the truth in some way, in a very innocuous fashion, I didn't see anything in there that I believe to be untrue. <clears throat> or even, it was even, uh, it was, it felt kind of harmless, to be honest, you know? Interesting. I, I it's very interesting. Be interesting to see um what comes out of it. We're gonna move on. We're gonna move on, but we're gonna deal with that. We're gonna deal with that. We are gonna deal with that. Uh uh. Uh uh. It was all publicly listed information, yeah. The contingency fee. Yeah. There's a difference between slander and label. If he thinks he's suing for slander, he may want a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, mate. Oh my god, I, I'm actually like, I don't know what to say. That's a first. How do you block someone after writing an entire article about them that defames them? Her banner is completely free. Let's, for fans' sake, it is per boner. Okay. We're going to um, read these because I've been on that part for too long. All right. Um, so that was me saying that that was his Instagram that he was publicly tweeting me on. Yeah, I know. I know. The journalists are shocked. Um, all right. Let me go on. Sorry, that has like thrown up. The journalists are shocked. My journalists. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know, texting what's a face from Insider. Oh, she's so irrelevant that I've just forgotten her name completely. Cat Tenbarge. It's just like texting Cat Tenbarge on the side. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just starting a, a war, you know? And, we, you know, we're going to have a dance-off, and it's between insider journalists and Vanity Fair journalists. You know? That's what this is. This is literally high school shit. It's, it's, it's fucking fantastic. Uh, curveball at me. Um, so then my mom tweets and is like, also, why are we not reached out to? Like, none of us reached out to. Um, we have been trying on social media for the past 24 hours. Didn't hear anything. Um, I go defamatory, and then another tweet that Vanity... Your mom needs to get a hobby. Like, why is she getting involved? I, I mean, as far as I can tell, you are an adult. Like, what, what is this? Fair, deleted in regards to the article, but by the way, ended up tweeting again after my tweet already got a bunch of likes, so then no one else would like the tweet because there's no tweet for it to quote. Um, I go, how dare you publish an article defaming me and straight up lying against evidence and not even have the decency to reach out to me? This goes further, which obviously we've already talked about. And then Paige Skinner, who wrote the Huffington Post article, who also got dragged in this, they discredited Paige, or Paige's article whenever Paige interviewed everyone. What a shocking comment. And said, you do realize that grooming doesn't mean sexual, right? This is bullshit, because they were trying to break that down, Paige is speaking up. And then Steven, who's another journalist who interviewed me, said, I agree, this article is really, really bad. It completely ignores the power dynamic issue. Mum is definitely instigating and keeping this going. I suspect that. Um, I suspect that 
Yeah. One talk about grooming. And the fact that Ballinger would bring minors on stage to mock them. Adam comes off as Chicken Little complaining about an imaginary falling sky rather than an actual victim. So the journalists are also speaking out against this. Someone, so um, Vanity Fair's tweet before they deleted it was like, it's really hard to pin down exactly what people are angry about with Colleen. If he actually spoke to a lawyer, he'd know it's not slander. Slander is speech. Print is LaBelle. The content of the article would have been libellous in order to sue. Yeah. That's like an important distinction. But then again, he hasn't used the words. Play devil's advocate. I don't believe he's... Oh, well, he has used the word slander, sorry. <laughs> Maybe he's not even speaking to a lawyer. Maybe he's just talking out of his ass. And someone quoted it and was like, I think it's pretty easy to pin it down, actually. You're just choosing to write this article. Um, someone goes, how do you even put these two... Oh my god, I can't... Sorry, I really can't get over that other thing. Okay, this will genuinely be the last thing I say, but a conversation that I had today, this completely eliminates something. Okay. Um, someone said, how do you even put two statements in the same article and not reflect on your framing of the situation? So this is in the article. So it's these two statements, you know, side by side. The magazine verified screenshots of which um, text that Ballinger asked a minor about their virginity status and their favorite sexual position. So they go, you know, the magazine verified screenshots. And then two sentences later go, no evidence in review even hinted at the possibility that Ballinger had intended to start a sexual relationship with a child. Number one, no one said that that was Colleen's aim, but you have just put two things side by side saying that she was asking sexual questions and then you're saying there was no evidence about anything to do with sexual. None of us, me, no one, said that Colleen Ballinger ever wanted to have a sexual relationship with us. We said that she was sexually inappropriate with us in the way that she would talk. There was no boundaries in terms of talking about sex or making jokes about sex. You're the ones trying to say that, that basically she wanted to have sex with us. None of us said that. However, the article within two sentences contradicts itself. The magazine verified screenshots in which Ballinger was asking about their favorite sexual positions. And then two sentences later, no evidence in review even hinted at the possibility that Ballinger was speaking in that sexual way. No, that's not what they've said. Like, he's, he's actually twisting what's on the screen right now. So, what they're saying in this article, it's as clear as fucking day. And I, I, it's amazing that he's twisting it, like, while we have the actual words right here. They're saying that there's no evidence that she was pursuing a relationship with any of these children. And the use of the word groomer in this context is obviously very um, strategized when it comes to Adam, you know? So what the article is saying, it's, it's pointing out a distinction. It's like, you know, I will try to um, give uh, media outlets the benefit of a doubt, but I see this as being quite a progressive article because it is pointing out and not just running with something and twisting it. It is pointing out the distinction of what she did and what it was and what evidence there is and what intent is behind it. Why didn't or whisper? Sorry. I mean, they called her a groomer. Groomers are generally peeps who want to start a, a, a relationship. Yes. Yes. And they're pointing out that that, there's no evidence to suggest that she was doing that, only that she was having inappropriate conversations, which is not good. I'm not defending that. Yeah, it's saying she was inappropriate, saying inappropriate things to kids, not trying to start a relationship with them. It's as plain as day. I mean, it's right there on the screen, and he's twisting that. So listen to what he says. Later, No evidence in review even hinted at the possibility that Ballinger was speaking in that sexual way. Later, no two sentences contradicts it. You're the ones trying to say that, that basically she wanted to have sex with us. None of us said that. However, the article within two sentences contradicts itself. The magazine verified screenshots in which Ballinger was asking about their favorite sexual positions. And then two sentences later, no evidence in review even hinted at the possibility that Ballinger was speaking in that sexual way. Right. So. <laughs> so manipulative. Like, it feels like, I feel like he doesn't respect his audience at all. You know, at all. Because it's very clear, they're not contradicting themselves. They're pointing out the distinction. They're making a distinction, sorry. Um, Becky, Johnny, were tweeting. Becky said, this is disgusting, shame on you. Johnny said, the Vanity Fair article was a smear campaign against Adam, convince me otherwise. Liv, a member of the Weenies, is saying, why was Adam not reached out to you for comments? This is incredibly sus. Um, Xylee tweeted, comparing it to the Cosmo um, article. This is an Azalea Banks meme, which I don't know who she was originally saying this to, but I just added to say Vanity Fair because I thought it was funny. Um, so Vanity Fair had tweeted, and we're like, the longer this drags out, the less people are know what's going on. 
And at Jesus Crust, of course, the ever so reliable. <laughs> I don't know who this is. Um, I beg to differ. The longer it drags out. By the way, they deleted all these tweets and then retweeted them again. Like, tweeted them again. One Which they have every right to do. Especially if... Um, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with it. But having said that, they have every right to do it. Kind of like, um, you know, Rotten Tomatoes purging viewer reviews of their movie if they believe they're being review bombed, which is really a convenient argument for really shitty pieces of media coming up while actually being honest about how they feel about it. But then again, there are instances where certain things do get review bombed because whatever reason, whatever because of whatever ism, you know. So we had all given our backlash, so then we would have to go out of our way to give the backlash again. So to the general public, it looks like the article's coming across good, which, by the way, is tweaking the public's response to an article that's coming. An article being well-received or not being well-received does not mean that it is not factual. I think that's a really important point to make. If an article comes out and people don't like it, but it's truthful... Who cares? Blatant tw fact twisting just irks me. Yeah, I agree. Poisoned. I mean, against me, which again. The comment, silly little idiot. <laughs> I saw that. You're going out of your way to further frame. The longer. And he's got all these 12 year olds in the chat going, oh my god, what the hell? Oh my god drags out the more in evidence seems to come to light all this article is done will show that colleen has some friends in high places too bad anyone paying attention knows that she is a pos people are saying colleen Ballinger wrote this and then i tweeted this i go the entire article was talking about how i have malicious intent towards colleen and i it would seem that you do based on what i've watched seems like you correct me if i'm wrong you became a twitter mod and you moderated one of her accounts then you uh, tweeted something that got her in trouble, and then she essentially fired you, and this is your retaliation. Have I got that wrong? I don't like the fact that my bank statement says broke, but it doesn't change the, the fact. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Same. <laughs> I totally understand, Whisper watch her every move and by the way they were like they were like he built his channel like hundreds of thousands of views like over the months and stuff and you know what's so funny in reviewing something that i talked about earlier obviously i had to you know counter the things the great thing about this is that because he's suing a publication or oh, allegedly <laughs> allegedly suing it <coughs> oh my god excuse me i'm allegedly suing a publication um he's opening himself up to that same thing you know. Um, actually, shout out Shane Dawson. Because the time period there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. We found a way to, to, to reel Shane into this conversation. Somehow. Somehow. Shane has come into the conversation. <laughs> Props to Shane Dawson. <laughs> He's probably going to be like, props to Shane Dawson. He didn't like put out a, uh, you know, he didn't plant an article allegedly. They're talking about on my YouTube channel was during um, Shane Dawson's um, big thing where I was making videos on Shane and making videos on Jeffrey and making videos on James. So there was no Colleen things at that time. So they're lying again, by the way, on. So they're trying to paint it as, you know, without Colleen, I wouldn't have those views, which again, statistically is wrong because I have like. You, you, you wouldn't have use without Colleen Bollinger. That is um, a fact because your channel took off when you posted the uh, Colleen Bollinger hit piece and you latched onto the whole Shane thing, you know, and that just carried you forward, you know? It's the same thing um, with me when I originally did my channel. Um, I started my channel and I covered like Nisian and stuff, which, you know, for the most part, is not on my channel anymore. Um, <clears throat> I think I decided to make some of it public. Um, but having said that, that was the main thing that drew people to my channel, you know? Back when I was a shitty tea channel, essentially. Um, but that, yeah.
I'm still trying to wrap my head around what he's saying and why Shane has something to do with this. Knows that she is a POS. People saying Colleen Ballinger wrote this, and then I tweeted this. I go, the entire article was talking about how I have malicious intent towards Colleen, and I watch her every move. And by the way, they were like, they were like, he built his channel like hundreds of thousands of views, like over the months and stuff. And you know what's so funny? In reviewing something that I talked about earlier, obviously I had to, you know, counter the things. Um, actually, shout out Shane Dawson, because the time period they're talking about on my YouTube channel was during um Shane Dawson's um big thing where I was making videos on Shane and making videos on Jeffrey and making videos on James. So there was no Colleen things at that time. So they're lying again, by the way. They didn't say that though, they said he frequently posts content about her and he does. She does anything and she's making a video about it. Um, they said had thousands of views from that content and he does. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I don't see anything that they've said that's like, you know, categorically untrue. That's why, I mean, like, good luck if you're trying to actually sue them. The label. The way on. So Libel. they're trying to paint it as, you know, without Colleen, I wouldn't have those views, which again, statistically is wrong because I have like 90 million views on my channel and I have over like a thousand videos and what they're saying is factually wrong. However, they're painting it in a way as like my entire job day in, day out was, you know, like for the past, you know. That's not slanderous, Adam. That's literally point and parcel what you do on your channel five years it's just been a video every single day about colleen uh, you twist things just enough so you can push a certain narrative which again factually wrong and is proven wrong by just going on my channel which again is um a statement that is incredibly wrong about me and is trying to ruin my reputation maxwell very sweet you weren't a shitty t channel you were a realistic t channel that actually assessed the situation and called people out on their hypocrisy mm -hmm. I don't really want to update right now. Um, you were a channel that actually assessed the situation and called people out hypocrisy and you made cool artistic stuff. Yeah, I want to get back to making cool artistic stuff. A bit more. He's trying to paint it. Thanks, Maxwell. He's trying to paint it as label and defamation, but it's not because he wasn't twisting things. Yeah. I don't see anything that's categorically untrue. And oh my God, if like... Uh, like a prosecution or something or, or an opposing side digs into this. My God, there's so much meat. Like, <laughs> I feel like Adam's just opening himself up for a world of pain. You know, if he goes up against a fucking giant media conglomerate, like, what are you doing? So. Well, it's not a conglomerate. It's a child company, I would say. Um, then I go on and say, they want to talk about me having malicious intent over her? Then why was Colleen in grip chats past the year of 2020 in the new Weenies chat saying shit like this about me? Do any of you have any proof of him talking about me, talking bad about me or wanting to expose me prior to this? Because the girls of Weenies let me... Yeah, because she probably heard something. She's just asking a question. That's not malicious. <laughs> I will concede though. I found you because of Anisia. <laughs> That's okay. A lot of people did, Max. <laughs> it's totally fine. <laughs> Let me know the Colleen Ballinger was... <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's okay. I understand. Trying to gather as much information about me as possible, and they gave her nothing because, guess what? I wasn't. I never was malicious towards Colleen. I was... <laughs> okay. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm about to bring out my Yoda voice. Mm, yes. The most loyal person to her. So she was actively going. Malicious, you were not. <laughs> out of her way, begging and pleading mm. people to find information about me, wanting to expose her, and they gave her nothing. And they gave her nothing. But I have all this evidence, and if you talk about the folder that we have yesterday. Evidence, yes. Of her keeping up with my every move, if you had reached out to me for comment, I would have given you all that information. Andrew Quintana. Came for an ECM, but you stayed for the market actor. Very happy you did, Max. You enjoy our gaming scene. Very fun. So then we go on. Cage responds, who wrote the article about the Huffington Post, and says, uh, why did you write that my article didn't do its due diligence? I did my due diligence. This is such bullshit, which is also just crazy. Look, all the journalists. Kelsey, who I love. They're violently wrong. Cat, I adore. It's condescending and wrong. Ellie as well. This is bullshit. Steven, completely uncalled for in there. Like, the journalists are criticizing this new journalist. Like, they're all like, what the fuck did you just do? But also, they're saying that Paige's article didn't do its due diligence. Big gloves whisper.
<laughs> Creatrix was a sp specifically looking for Australian content creators. Thank you. That makes me very nationally proud. Love that. I will say I'm not probably a typical Australian. <laughs> kind of sound like the lawyer from the castle. You know? Main character's like, We're going to Bonnie Doon. <laughs> and the lawyer that's defending him is like, Yes, Daryl. <laughs> Hello, Daryl. Yes, lovely. <laughs> Ugh, why am I so educated? <laughs> why was I pressured into speaking with perfect diction? <laughs> oh, a nationalist. Oh, no. I'm a dirty little Australian. <clears throat> I can sound like... <laughs> sound like um, fucking parent stamp in Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Why don't you blow out your tampon and blow your box apart? Because <laughs> it's the only bang you're going to get, sweetheart. And I'm white, I know. Did you just white shave me, Maxwell? Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking love Terrence Stamp. Why don't you light your tampon? <laughs> <laughs> the sickest burn in cinema history. <laughs> watch list. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Well, I've been watch listed, guys. Ooh, no. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> no fly watch list. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I can't go to Bali now. I shall have to go by boat. Like a dirty little colonist. Even though, didn't Paige interview all of us? Did Vanity Fair interview anyone except for Colleen's lawyers? Nope. So then we go on. And we have people saying about their contact information because he was trying to run and hide on social media. It does not work like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it does not work like that. You, you, you cannot do something like this, block me, and then run away. It doesn't work. Yes, you can. <laughs> Fuck off. Fuentes Nectar. <laughs> Fuentes. Alinguez. <laughs> Gracias, señor. Por favor. <laughs> work like that. It does not work like that at all. Does not work like that. Oh my god, I, I've got a really great, great friend. He said he's so much I can say about it, but he was gonna go to have dinner with some. He may have been of that descent, and he was like thinking about <laughs> doing the taco taco burrito burrito. <laughs> my name is Hedefe Lopez. <laughs> the thing from South Park, and I'm like, maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> I think he was just messing with me, but I was just like, don't do that. Probably shouldn't do that. Mm. Not Hedy for Lopez. I like tacos and burritos. Mm. Um, Adam's acting like he's a mafia boss with social media. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Hello. No, 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 Senor Griffin. <laughs> Are they, little boy? You want a popsicle? <laughs> want to come down to my basement? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why this turned into family guy voices, but anyway, I'll stop. <laughs> then you do it as a stream. Do it on stream. Yeah, why not? <laughs> of course I do it on stream. It's fine. Not doing it to anyone directly, you know? Unless they want me to. The dramatic car ride with Hennifer was. <laughs> so Xander uh, put online and was like, people have been DMing me asking if Vanity's... Xander from Buffy? My God, I didn't know he was here. Um, article is... I'm at the point where I'm just like, piss taking. 
Commission of Character against Adam. First of all, I'm still in the process of getting my JD, but let's look at the four characteristics needed. Number one, false statement reporting to be a fact. Vanity reached out to Colleen's lawyers and reported on it as a fact um, and, you know, could hold water against this, as well as Andrew indicating that Adam was lollygagging with the underwear and sending pictures of him in them. And the biggest part is Andrew's claim that no sexual crime has been committed and how he brushed aside and acted as if Johnny didn't receive also nude photos of Trisha. No crime has been committed to my knowledge. Trisha. He refused to even name Trisha. Number two, publication and communication of that to a third person. Taco flavored kisses. Taco, taco, burrito, burrito. <laughs> person. This is tricky. Communication. <laughs> Oh, no. Between Vanity Fair and Colleen's lawyers would have been, you know, subponed in order to see um, what was said. Number three, fault amounting to negligence. Just for everyone out there who's going to cancel me, I did not write that joke. That was Troy. You know. Math Park, it was not me. I'm just directly quoting it. I'm not endorsing it, okay? So, hands off the keyboard. Relax, children. Negligence. Refusing to reach out to any of the victims and only reaching out to Colleen is is being very, uh, it's, the negligence is there of its own right. Also, the lack of research presented can arguably be attributed to that as well as an example would be refusing to acknowledge that grooming isn't only sexual. And then hyper fixating on that single bad claim of blackface. Number four, damages and harm caused to the party affected. Yes, Adam could easily prove by that his reputation and belief, you know, ability in the public sphere has been smeared because of this article. Since this is written, it's considered a, a you know a case um, at which we would prove that actual malice was proven here. The talking point of only reaching out to Colleen's lawyers could be used here as solid proof that the conversation combined with examples of text from Vanity Fair's article could be used to prove actual malice, which is the intent to damage someone's reputation, in this case me. Um, and then basically just, you know, does different parts of the article. I mean, this is, this is the perfect example of fishing for opinions specifically with malicious intent. You're fishing for opinions that agree with you and not for, for opinions that do not, you know? Um, so you're essentially applying this to this whole situation, the same thing that this journalist, Andrew, did. Right now, you're applying the same logic that he did to the situation. So. <laughs> I mean, the, the, it's not like you're looking at arguments that are against you, you know? No, no, no. It'd take too much of a blow to the ego, wouldn't it? So I thought that was a good set of tweets from bias on the internet. <laughs> Dramatic gasp. Um, um, Xander. He's opening himself up for so much shit. I know. That's what I mean. I'm like, it's like, oh, Adam, abort mission, abort. <laughs> Um, and I go, it's clear defamation if you know facts and you're choosing not to include them. And I go, issue a retraction of the correction. That's 21 hours ago. And then I, you know. Well, as Mike lives in Victoria, funny enough, we get, we're called Mexicans. We are. People in Australia refer to Victorians as Mexicans. <laughs> oh dear. That's quite unfortunate. So again, because they ignored that. Um, so this was last night. We'll now be issuing to Vanity Fair to review the facts that have been made available for a month and a half now and make them and they have to make a correction or a retraction and we'll go from there. They refuse to do that, so obviously it's going further. Um, someone said exactly the facts have now been publicly available for four weeks. Per research leads to def uh, defamatory statements to do better. Um, then he went private on Instagram. Well, now we know that he blocked me. Um, and sorry, I just thought that someone edited this of like Wendy Williams talking about me, which I thought was funny, but also even more ironic because whenever we're doing the pandemic, I was on her show, like the, the back screens and they always put me beside her. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so Paige said, Hey, you know, if you're rich enough, you can pay for scandals to go away. Allegedly, we don't know if she. What the fuck was he on Wendy Williams? That's so random. Get any involvement in that, but I mean, the only art the article only did quotes from her lawyer, but still, we don't know if anything further was involved in it. Paige tweets out the article that, you know, she made the really great one. Uh, oh yeah, the great article that agreed with me. <laughs> Page made a great article. You know, if journalists, do, like, if they butter me up and they, like, say nice things about me, then they're a great journalist. That's the only quota for a great journalist. It's just buttering me up, you know? That's fucking fantastic. This is gold. Um, Graham, who was a member of the Weenies, the Weenies are not coming out, and goes, I added the money. The Weenies? Am I missing something? It was so good. Thank you. Um, Graham goes, oh, fuck off. We know the exact truth because we literally lived through it. The information on everyone who's a victim of hers is easily accessible. Another member of Weenies speaking out against the article, but they would have known this if they reached out to the people involved. Graham goes on. The absolute disgusting irony of, of this being compared to how right-wingers have been attacking the LGBTQ plus community as groomers when so many of her victims themselves are LGBTQ plus people and would never throw that word around carelessly. Colleen is an actual groomer and should be called that. I thought that tweet from Graham was really, really, really good. Yeah, of course, because it's agreeing with you. Um... All right, so we have, so they did all these tweets. Here is like one of their editor-in-chiefs. Um, and then we go on and 
so here we have this one I thought was good. Um, this excerpt is so telling about Colleen's PR strategy or whatever is going on here, right? Provide a disproven accusation with an extremely serious and credible accusation. Only address the disproven one and act as if nothing happened. Clear and blatant manipulation and the article is defamation. So what they're saying is provide a disproven accusation and then also say a very serious one and only address the disproven one. So it looks like you're addressing the allegations, but you're not. So here we go. Performing a Beyonce song in blackface. So that's the one that they're disproving. I mean, the, the, the hilarious thing about this is that majority of the article was attacking his perspective and not him himself. So I think that's where he's going to run into trouble. Because um, <laughs> it's not, it's not really, uh, you know, it's a perspective. You can't sue someone for sharing an opinion on established, pre-established information. I wouldn't say that I agree with the article even, <clears throat> or the way it was framed. Um, but for the most part, mostly I do. <laughs> But having said that, like, you can't sue someone for sharing their opinion. As far as I can, as far as I can tell. Okay. Then they're not disproving <clears throat> to texting a sex worker's nudes to a minor. And then they finish the paragraph just focusing on the blackface. So, there we go. Um... So we have someone saying, I'm a law degree holder here myself. These claims are far from baseless and obsensiated. Um, when there is an electronic paper trail from Adam and several others, the article itself is, as you said, purely defamatory for the reasons of the paper trail that is out there and readily available. So this was the tweet. One can look at the uh, de-abolition of the Miranda Singh's empire and see that the longer it drags out, the harder it is to pinpoint the truth. So this was the tweet that everyone was quoting. They end up deleting this tweet and I go, oh shit, they're going to retract the article. No. They end up tweeting it again, now that all the backlash has already happened, hoping that, oh, you've already given the backlash. So they tweet it again, again. We've already given the backlash. Why wouldn't they? <clears throat> Especially if the backlash is unwarranted. Why wouldn't they post it again? See, they don't see the backlash as warranted. They see you people as unhinged and liars. That's why they're posting it again. That is their perspective, Adam. So they're like, oh, they're not going to come for this one. So they tweet it again. But now all of us are giving the backlash on this one. And they end up tweeting it. Another time, with a different section of it, again, yeah. they tweet it two different times to take away from the fact that they had to delete the first one, and they're tweeting it twice so that, they, so that the hate is spread out against two, and the hate from the first one is gone. Why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> Why wouldn't you do that? And look at this 15 hours ago. It's smart. My mother, literally. It's like, it's like making you realize or, or sending the message to all these people that all of their effort all of their time on this malicious, shitty website of posting and responding and everything like that, your time is wasted. It's beautiful. I love it. I, I think it's fantastic. Is ratioing the tweet. If someone could contact me in relation to this article. Yes, because ratios, they, they, they're set in stone. That is evidence. If something is ratioed, that means it's wrong, guys. Internet 101. So... Everyone's saying deleting one tweet doesn't take away from the fact that the article is still circulating. And then they start, again, they're, they're just tweeting it to diversify where the backlash goes. So, motherfucker, I tweet the same thing again. I tweet the same thing again. So someone tweets Vanity Fair on a random tweet because they were deleting all of them, so they respond to this random one. An actual child at the time was relentlessly bullied online back in 2020 because no one believed him about the Colleen Ballinger accusations. He has now shown proof, screenshots, and tons of video evidence, and then you proceed to discredit and lie on the child victim. Whenever Adam or his audience needs to deflect criticism... They reference him as being a child. That's something that I have noticed a lot. He is no longer a child, and he is responsible for things that he says. So there's only so much time or so many instances where you can hide behind that argument, Adam. Victim. And one thing I thought was so interesting in the article is they say that it's been um, a public back and forth of opinion between me and Colleen for the last couple of years, which is not the case, and we are proving that that is not the case. Another thing they do is they say that I, you know, relentlessly watch her every move, giving daily updates for the past couple of years. This is the kind of content I make. That is the type of content you make. <laughs> You're saying that like it's not true. Whereas Colleen Ballinger posts wholesome family content where she focuses on herself and her babies, minding her own business. I mean, she, that's pretty much the crux of the channel. So, yeah. So we're proving that wrong, too. Ow. Now. So, okay, we're not proving that. <laughs> cool. All right. That is what has happened so far. I can't believe he's blocked me. I can't believe he's blocked me.
that is what's happening. That is the update. I will leave it there. They didn't say any of that. He's twisting it. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It, how? You can't just say you've proved something and then not prove it. I appreciate the support on people defending me on social media with this. I mean, this is... No problem, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing people don't realize is that I'm doing this for Adam's well-being. You know? I care about Adam. I care about him and his mental well-being. I think it's really important when you have someone who's delusional to not validate things that they're saying if they're untrue. Okay? Completely different to if this an article like this would have came out in 2020. Um, so I appreciate that. I really, really, really do. And I appreciate people taking the time to look into this story. Oh my God, it's Selena Gomez's birthday. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what? That could be categorized as a jump scare. I was just like, whoa, whiplash. <laughs> Fuck's sake. It's Selena Gomez's birthday. Completely irrelevant. <laughs> right? No, she's the 22nd of July. Is that correct? If that's correct, my. I think it's the <laughs> Why are we talking about this? 22nd of July. Who cares? 22nd of July, 99. Okay, why is it trending today then? Anyway, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like don't even know what I was talking about but whatever yeah yeah that's the update so I will talk to you all very soon thank you for being here and I appreciate the support and taking the time to look at the facts and form it what facts what facts did you share no facts were shared an opinion of this rather than whatever the bullshit was that Andrew Quintana did and my closing point is fuck you Andrew Quintana fuck all the way off and unblock me talk to me Fuck you, but also talk to me. <laughs> Seriously. There is All one. right, I want to talk about what happened. Uh... <laughs> well, guys, this is going to be very interesting to follow.